Welcome to the video Creating Professional Navigation and Design. This is video 4 in a series of 10 that will take you through the step by step process for building your own internet business. My name is Miles Galliford and I'll be your presenter for the series. In this video, I'll take you through the best layout for a content driven website, explain how to create intuitive navigation, and look at the most important things to consider when adding your design. So let's get started with layout. You must plan your layout before you can consider the navigation and design. And when it comes to layout, don't reinvent the wheel. The biggest and best content websites in the world have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars optimizing their layouts. So learn from what they do. So if you take a look at the layout, take a look at the layouts of sites like Yahoo or the BBC's website or the sites of the leading newspapers like the FT.com and the New York Times and the award-winning Telegraph site. You will see the common layout elements. So let's take a look at what they are using this Telegraph site. First, a masthead with the logo in the top left-hand corner. Second, a main navigation menu in the right hand column. This usually has all the links to the category headings which remain constant throughout the website. For example if the site was about wine the main categories could be red wine, white wine, rosé wine and sparkling wine. An optional secondary menu runs along the top. This usually has links to the website's support information such as the About Us page, the Contact Us page, and where people to go to log in. These links remain constant on every page. And a third navigation menu is often in the right hand column. Unlike the left side and top navigation bar, links in the right menu tend to change depending on which page they are on. The links can be to, for example, the most popular articles, to the forum, to case studies and to other important content. This navigation menu often disappears on content pages to leave more room for the articles and images. The center of the page is usually where the actual content is displayed. So this is the optimal layout for a content driven website. The right navigation column remains constant for the home page and appears in the category home pages and then often disappears on the content pages themselves to leave more space. If you follow this layout, you will never go far wrong. And a final important tip about website layout is understanding how people read web pages. Research which has tracked the eye movements of hundreds of web users clearly shows a common pattern. The red is the most looked at part of a web page, the blue is the least looked at. This is one example, this is another example, and this is a third example can you see the common trend? The eyes typically scan from the top left across the page to the top right and then back again and then back across and then, and then again and then back across and then down again in an ever decreasing triangle. So what does this tell you? Well, where is the most important place on the page? I call it the golden square it sits in the top of the left hand column just below the logo. Reserve this place for the most important action on any page. For example, on a subscription website use this space to encourage visitors to become members. If your site is focused on selling a product or service this is the place to promote it. Or in the case of our website subhub.com we use this space to get sign-ups to our free newsletter. So remember the golden square and use it wisely. So now let's have a look. Now we've had a look at page lay layout, it's time to move on to the navigation. Navigation is any link on a page which when clicked enables the visitor to move to another part of the site. If your navigation is done well, it will make using your site enjoyable and people will stay. If it is done badly, visitors will quickly become frustrated and leave. Good navigation is simple to understand, intuitive to use, 
and relevant to what is on any page. So on every website page, the main navigation should be in the left-hand column, the secondary navigation should be at the top, and these two navigation elements should remain the same on every page of your website. And the right-hand navigation can change on every page to link readers to content that is relevant to the page they're reading. We can see this navigation format clearly shown on the Telegraph website. The constant left navigation column, the constant top navigation bar, and then the content relevant links in the right hand column. So let's get started on building your navigation using a navigation wireframe. You can do this with a software program like Visio, but it's just as easy to do it with a pencil on a large sheet of paper. Draw a box at the top to represent the home page, then draw another box to re represent a page that the home page links to. This is the first category. For example, on a site about wine, this could be red wine. Add any subcategories, if there are any. For example, on a site about wine, the subcategories could be types of wine, for example, claret, cabernet and shiraz. And the articles will be within the subcategories. Then add the additional categories, for example, white wine, rosé, sparkling wine, etc. Next add the links to the top navigation bar. The typical links that appear here, things like the About Us link, Contact Us, and links to the login page. Finally, add the miscellaneous links. For example, at the bottom of the page you'll often have a link to the terms and conditions and to your privacy policy. Once you've done this, you will have a complete wireframe of your whole navigation. This is critical to getting your website built. And it's only after you've done the navigation should you consider doing the design. Clear navigation, like on the Telegraph site, will make your site a pleasure to visit and will encourage visitors to stay. Once you have the layout and navigation sorted out, it's time to add the design. This includes choosing colours, fonts and images, which will determine your website's look and feel and its tone and personality. So here are the main things you should consider. Make your site easily readable by having high contrast between the text and the background. For any blocks of text, you should always have black or grey writing on a white background never have colored text on a colored background. Make the site inviting and informative. Short sentences, lots of white space, simple navigation. Sites like this one are a pleasure to read. Unlike this one, a page of uninterrupted, uninterrupted text is too daunting a challenge for most readers. Every page on your website should reward your visitor with immediate access to new and valuable information. Remember that visitors can arrive on any page of your website, not just the home page. Never waste your visitors' time with useless flash intro pages. It offers a visitor nothing of any value. Use images to enhance and illustrate a story. Avoid using images just as eye candy, or using irrelevant images without supporting information. Use colour sparingly. A little colour goes a long, long way and too much colour kills a, si a site stone dead. Avoid clutter. If a site looks easy to read, people will read it. If it looks like it's going to be challenging, visitors will quickly move on. This site looks a mess. People will not bother to read it. And never force your visitors to download software or make a choice before allowing them to see the site's content. This will greatly reduce the number of visitors who stay. And finally, choose colours and styles that are appropriate to the subject. Which of, thy, which of these sites work best for trees and plants? This one or this one? Just compare them. So that's it for design. So if I just summarise. Copy the layout of the best content sites on the web. Plan your navigation using a wireframe diagram. And finally, only after you've decided on the layout and navigation, add the design in a way that complements and enhances your content. 
Thank you for watching and listening, and I hope to be talking to you again soon. In video 5 we'll look at how to plan outstanding content that will attract visitors. If you want to be notified when new videos, videos are released and get access to hundreds of free articles about how to make money online, go to subhub.com and sign up for the free email newsletter.